so in the previous class we were discussing about the symmetry properties of dft hmm. so symmetry properties of dft we are uh, uh, curious uh, because they let you reduce some amount of computations as i was telling endpoint dft computation is directly related it, you know as a consequence there are lots and lots of multiplications and addition involved a typical uh, complex endpoint time domain sequence if at all you want to find an endpoint dft of it you usually need n square number of multiplications n into n minus one number of complex additions remember complex multiplications and <coughs> complex additions one complex multiplication say say a plus jb into c plus jd it typically has four real multiplications and two real additions so that much complex the things are so if at all you happen to know the actual nature of your time domain sequence then you need not unnecessarily go through the entire process okay that was the intention there hmm? so uh, the topic it started with you separating the sequence in terms of the real and imaginary components and even the dfts were represented as the real part and imaginary part right what is that real part by the way so real part is the one which contains only the real terms and then there was this imaginary part okay hmm? so here was how it was represented and as a consequence of it as a consequence of it, there are few important i am not going to much of those dft properties symmetry properties because it will add to the confusion later but one property that we are seeing if at all the sequence is purely real as a part of the symmetry it is uh, going to satisfy the conjugate symmetry property that is x of uh, n minus k x of k equal to x conjugate of uh, n minus k hmm? let us uh, one property that it uh, satisfies okay hmm? we have seen it in so many numericals and one more thing i want to tell you i will not uh, be doing any uh, proof of any uh, numericals here for proof of any properties you refer uh, digital signal processing by ganeshra prescribed book anyway i have shared with you you have that hmm? so there is an important thing before i go to circular convolution let me just tell you if at all the sequence happens to be see here why we are interested in the symmetry properties the author says that if at all the time domain sequence of which you want to find dft if the sequence is real and even hmm, what is meant by a real and an even sequence let me just write a sequence here say something like a even sequence i will write a real and even sequence okay two uh, zero Two, zero. Mm -hmm. See, you can see this sequence is an example of a real and an even sequence, such that what is a real and even sequence? If at all I plot it around the circle, say two, zero, two, zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you go start from the origin, if you go clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction, or clockwise direction, you read it. The values are still going to be. same okay hmm. what are the there is a catch here there is a catch here if at all you take a sequence which is purely real hmm. if at all you take a sequence which is purely real and you multiply with a sequence which is purely uh, real and even okay if at all you take a sequence which is real and even and say you multiply with a sequence which is uh, real and odd or need not be real you multiply it with a sequence which is odd say what is an odd sequence Uh, zero uh, minus one, zero plus one is an example of a odd sequence. Okay, hmm? this is an example of a odd sequence. So usually, what happens is whenever you multiply an even sequence with an odd sequence, then you do the summation. Then you do the summation. The resulting sequence is always zero. Okay, are you getting what I am trying to say? you take a real even sequence then you multiply it with a uh, odd sequence and you do the summation then the summation is always resulting in a zero okay hmm? you multiply an even sequence or odd sequence and do the summation it's zero multiply an odd sequence with an even sequence then the resultant is also zero so what's the consequence so here say 
f of n say is a real and an even sequence and then if at all you try to find the dft hmm, author says that author says that you just have to calculate this part hmm, you just have to calculate this part why is it so why is it so let us go back to the previous slide let us go back to the previous slide why that happened because see here for dft computation there is this uh, real part okay i told what sort of sequence it is it's a real and even sequence so this segment is first of all not at all there okay hmm? i told you in the previous class if, if the sequence is purely real then these two terms you need not compute at all okay so if at all you are writing a microcontroller program for dft computation or an hdl program for dft computation and if the input which are going to give you know is real then you would need not write a segment for this at all okay now let us talk about a real and even if the sequence is real and even so you can see what about a cost term i let me remind you from whatever you said in the previous semester a cos wave is a even signal okay it is a, uh, as usual it is even and it is circularly also a cos wave is even whereas a sine wave is an odd sequence cos is even and a sine wave is odd that's why i just told you you multiply an even sequence with an odd sequence and then you do the summation it always results in a zero Hmm. So, by the virtue of uh, the signal being purely real, these two uh, things were not at all there. So, that's why your DFT computation X of K, right? DFT computation X of K has uh, where you need to calculate only this particular term. Okay, got this particular thing, got this particular thing. If the sequence is purely real, then only this much you need to calculate, remaining all three parts. Similarly, similarly, let me ask you. If the sequence is uh, real and odd, then what's going to happen? If the sequence is real and odd, then what's going to happen? If the sequence is real and it is odd, then what will happen is the image this anyway. Hmm? This anyway you need not compute. If the sequence is real and odd, then what's going to the odd sequence? Okay, odd sequence multiplied by an even sequence. Remember, cos is an even sequence. Odd sequence multiplied by an even sequence, this thing results in a zero. And your entire DFT computation contains only computation of this particular term. Okay, hmm? got this particular thing? So that's where we are, that's why we are interested in the symmetry properties of DFT. Okay, hmm? that's what author intends to tell here. If the sequence is pure real and even, this is what? This is the expression of your DFT. You can see one fourth of the computations have been reduced here. The computational complexity has been reduced by 75%. That when number of multiplications and additions have been removed. And you can see there are no complex multiplications at all now because cost term is also real and your sequence is also real here, sorry, sorry here. Hmm? Something similar, uh, vice versa for IDFT also. Hmm? Vice versa for IDFT also. Hmm? Similarly, if at all the sequences, real and odd as i told you if sequence is odd then the sign part remains same cos part goes because uh, sequence is odd whereas the cos wave is even you do the summation then uh, multiply and summation it will simply go to zero okay hmm? so there will be our resultant sequence j comes in okay j comes in okay hmm? that's that so let me just summarize the uh, okay. something similar for the imaginary sequences also something imagine something for the imaginary sequences also an extension of that so the trick to all these computations is for you to be able to visualize the entire dft and idft computations in terms of real and imaginary components separately okay this is a you know architect's point of view hmm? you can see if a microcontroller programmer's point of view okay hmm? Now let us uh, continue further. Okay, so there is a consolidated uh, properties of a DFT. Again, as I told you, I will not uh, tell you much of the properties and add to the confusion. But this is what uh, we have already seen. If the sequence is uh, real, hmm? then x of co x of n minus k. Okay, x of k equal to x of n man, that is one particular thing if the sequence x of n has a dft x of k hmm, x conjugate of n 
if x of n has a dft x of k x conjugate of n has a dft x conjugate of n minus k and uh, this uh, follows from the symmetry property this follows from the symmetry property hmm? then uh, for real sequences this is a very important property that we have seen okay hmm? this is a very important property that we have seen okay hmm? that's that that's about the symmetry properties now let us see the next very important property probably uh, this is the property for which the entire dft has been conceived okay hmm? the whole uh, reason why entire dft has been conceived is because of this particular property okay hmm? so before this let me ask you before this let me ask you uh, do you remember the convolution property of dtft or the z transform anybody anybody can you listen to me please somebody reply do you know the convolution property of dtft or the z transform do you remember somebody somebody yeah what is that property what does it say yes what does the property say what does the property say what does the property say you can use the mic okay i have let you uh, unmute hmm? would somebody like to tell it hmm? so the property said that a multiplication in the z domain a multiplication in the z domain say i have x1 of z and x2 of z say i have x1 of z and x2 of z if at all i multiply them in the z domain the resultant what you get is nothing but convolution right the resultant is nothing but convolution right x1 of n multi convolved with x2 of n remember same was the case with x of omega also hmm, same was the case with x of omega also right same was the case with the dft hmm. but there is a slight catch here hmm, x2 of omega okay there is a small catch here hmm. since okay okay do you remember the expression for um, <coughs> uh, convolution how did you do this convolution let me show you a typical convolution what does the convolution uh, involve see here x1 of n convolved with x2 of n what is the expression take all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity x1 of k x2 of n minus k hmm. that means what is the procedure what is the procedure you take the first sequence suppose i have x1 of k what is x1 of k here wait a second let me just take you to the next slide huh? uh, here here sorry uh, here i have x1 of n is this one 2 1 2 1 x2 of n is 1 2 3 4 okay x1 of n is 2 1 2 1 x2 of n is 1 2 3 4 okay hmm? so how do we do it typically so uh, too many distractions here let me take you to the previous slide only okay 1 2 1 2 and 2 1 2 1 and 1 2 3 4 okay so the first term will be multiplied with the shifted versions of the second term okay first term will be multiplied with the shifted versions of the second sequence i will tell okay second sequence then entire thing is uh, you know added out okay that means see here 1 2 3 4 as it is multiplied by the first term see here 2 1 2 1 is the first sequence okay the individual terms are multiplied by 2 is multiplied by the sequence as it is 2 is multiplied by the sequence as it is 1 is multiplied by sequence shifted by one location 2 is multiplied by sequence shifted by another one location the two location 1 is shifted by the same sequence uh, shifted by one more location okay hmm? so the expression here uh, this term shows the scaled and shifted summations okay hmm? scaled and uh, scaled and shifted summation and added okay and there you get the value okay there you get the value now what's going to happen so the shifts by the way what sort of shifts now if at all we talk about the dft from dtft there is a small catch here in dft you do not have the freedom to go from minus infinity to infinity on a digital computer you are supposed to be restricted from 0 to n minus 1 only some finite values the next catch is when you do the convolution the convolution is no more called a linear convolution but it is called as a circular convolution with a circle and then 
you will write an n okay a circle and you will write an n the catch is the catch is all the sequences that you do now let let me take you to the next page here hmm? let me take you to the next page here so what's going to happen now the expression see the change in the expression circular convolutions are represented something like this a star with a circle and then they write an n n can be 4 n can be 6 n can be 20 okay hmm? they come linear convolution did not come with an input right similarly do you remember dft what is the difference between the dtft and dft can somebody tell me can somebody quote the differences between dtft and dft somebody would somebody like to tell i have allowed you to unmute hmm? would somebody like to tell an answer Hmm? Okay, no, no participation. Okay, fine. Yeah. Hmm? So, what is the difference here? Let me tell you. In case of a circular convolution, the first thing is the values are not going from minus c here. This is a linear convolution, minus infinity to infinity. Whereas in circular convolution, it is zero to three. Why I am talking circular convolution here? By the way, so as I was telling you earlier. DTFT and DFT is a compromised version of DTFT. That is why when you multiply two Z transforms and take inverse, it is same as linear convolution. When you multiply DTFTs in the frequency domain and take inverse, it's going to be convolution. But when you multiply two DFTs and you take the inverse, what you get is not circular linear convolution, but something similar. They call it circular convolution for a reason that all the shifts now that you do all the shifts now that you do are not a normal shifts but they are circular shifts and the second thing is now the summation is not from minus infinity to infinity but now everything is restricted from 0 to n minus 1 okay everything is restricted from 0 to n minus 1 okay and and the third thing is the third thing is uh, what's the third thing there is an n here third thing is there is a n here got this particular thing got this particular thing the first difference is let me tell you the name is circular convolution so that all the shifts now that you do of the second sequence they are circular shifts that is the first difference the second difference is the values are not from minus infinity to infinity but they are from 0 to n minus 1 and the third thing is the third thing is now there comes an n there comes a n now linear convolution was unconditional even dtft was unconditional x1 of um, omega multiplied by x of omega find a dft dtft of uh, that's what the question should be asked here they will explicitly mention find a 4 point dft find a 20 point dft find a 100 point dft and so on okay what this particular thing there is its new term n also on the picture let us see what is the consequence what let us see what is the consequence so this is a typical linear convolution as i said earlier normal shifts okay normal shifts on the right side hmm? and zeros will be coming on the left side zeros will be filled in the left side and the values keep shifting on the right side no restriction on the length but but when you talk about this particular new convolution, whatever we are talking, there is a catch. Okay, what's the catch? Uh, the first thing is all the values now shall be limited to 0 to n minus 1. All the values shall be limited to 0 to n minus 1. Okay, hmm? 0 to n minus 1. Okay, second thing is all the shifts shall be circular that means see here one two three four then zero the first shift one two three this four shall be placed here you can see here one two three then the four the third shift one two then the three then four then the final shift okay you can see what is part one two three four okay hmm? and and no more values above n minus one these values are not taken into picture only these values then you do the summation 
got this particular thing hence a circular convolution hence a circular why this thing happened by the way because now what you multiply are not dtfts but what you are multiplied now are dfts and when you talk dft the linear uh, shift becomes a circular shift as a consequence now you got this particular thing which looks like a linear convolution what we studied in the previous semester but there is a catch that the shifts are circular in nature but let us see what is actually happening now see here i have written for you uh, for the comparison the circular convolution procedure here on this side the linear convolution procedure here on this side okay hmm? this is circular here is linear see here i have done linear convolution as it is now you can see this particular segment on the right side which we have not taken into consideration right i told you above n minus 1 we are not taking into consideration let me just take this thing and let me add it here okay i will uh, put the, take the segment and add it here see 12 11 4 what i have done now then there is a zero okay afterward there is a zero so what is actually happening is the i am trying to draw some similarity between circular and linear convolution you can see a 12 plus 2 what is it 14 11 plus 5 16 10 plus 4 14 16 plus 0 16 what this particular thing what is actually happening so the results are getting circularly overlapped you know, this is something like what i called aliasing remember aliasing the adjacent band is getting overlapped here okay hmm? overlapped here okay so got this particular thing by the way now shall you understand the method of circular convolution now shall you understand the method of circular convolution circular convolution is represented by a star with the circle then an n value this is a four point circular convolution from 0 to 3 x1 of m x2 of n minus m the shift shall be circular so first sequence as it is gets multiplied 2 1 2 1 the second sequence now shall be shifted but shifted circularly so this is x of n minus 1 x of n as it is this is x of n minus 1 circular x of n minus 2 circular x of n minus 3 circular then afterwards the values are multiplied and added and there you get it okay there you get it understood understood now shall we see what if a five point circular convolution is asked if at all a five point circular convolution is asked okay say a five point circular convolution is asked your sequence has only four values what we'll do let us stuff in a zero let us stuff in a zero then afterwards now the shifts whatever we are doing are five point circular shifts today morning i asked you to give a try to that uh, shift the circular shift where n also plays a role okay n also plays an important role now you can see can you tell me what is this particular sequence how it is related to uh, this sequence one two three four can somebody tell me this particular sequence whatever i have written here how it is related to one two three four can you tell me somebody can somebody tell me what is the sequence this sequence here what i have drawn is nothing but x of n minus 1 it is x of n minus 1 but circular x of n minus 1 circular this sequence here whatever i have drawn is x of n minus n minus 2 okay circular cool with n is equal to 5 what this particular thing what this particular thing this is this one so you see the difference is earlier we took a four point circular convolution now we have taken a five point circular convolution and you can see answer of a four current circular convolution contains four values answer of a five point circular convolution contains five values okay hmm? so what is actually happening here see the result here carefully see the result here carefully now let me take you to the previous slide understood or not somebody please message are you getting this particular thing i asked you to solve that small bit of numerical which i posted today in the group hmm? if you do that you will be somewhat comfortable with this particular class now let me come here what was the value of n there by the way value of n minus 5 
look at this particular problem here this is a linear convolution problem hmm? this is a linear convolution problem okay no changes whatever you studied in the previous semester linear convolution here what i will do is i will take 1 2 3 4 5 after five values let me draw a line here the sixth and seventh values let me add here say 11 i will add with 2 4 i will add here remaining all the values zeros only right now say i do this particular thing 11 plus 2 13 5 plus 4 9 then 10 16 and 12 okay five values do you remember these values by the way remember this they are same as what you got after the five point circular convolution hmm. okay okay Ma. Hmm. see now see what is happening so when we spoke about a, a four point circular convolution the last values after four they were getting overlapped with the linear convolution values so you got these values now when we talk about a five point circular convolution do you see what happened there hmm? see 10 16 and 12 are part of the original linear convolution answer only thing what happened is these two values are the overlap of the first two values with the uh, next two values after five what this particular thing how a circular convolution works hmm? how a circle now can anybody tell me out of curiosity i hope no it is difficult can anybody tell me if at all i want to use circular convolution expression only but i want the answer as same as that of linear convolution what value of n should i choose can somebody tell me what is the requirement i want circular con linear convolution answer only but i want to do circular i want to use circular convolution formula so what value of n shall i choose what value of n should i choose so when i choose four value n is equal to four the next three values were getting overlapped when i choose n equal to five the last two values were getting uh, overlapped with first two values when i choose n equal to six what's going to happen the last value is going to overlap with the first value. When I choose n equal to 7, what's going to happen? There will not be any value left. So, the linear convolution answer is what you get from your circular convolution. Okay. Now, by the way, why are we discussing this? Did you get the uh, concept here, by the way? The circular convolution, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable with this particular thing? Do you know what is actually the only thing is the shifts need to be circular and it comes with a n okay hmm? are we cool okay so why are we discussing why are we discussing why this situation occurred the situation occurred is because since we are using a dft not dtft so that if at all x1 of n x1 of t are a dft pair x2 of n and x2 of t are a dft pair remember same value of n hmm? One cannot be a four point DFT, second one cannot be a five point DFT. The sequence sizes should match. Hmm? Sizes should match. If at all I take two DFTs, then if at all I multiply the DFTs, if at all I the multiply two DFTs and I take an inverse, the answer what I get will be not that of a linear convolution, but will be that of a circular convolution. But I had told you in the previous class. I have told you in the previous class that filtering filtering means linear convolution and I have also told you in the introductory class how important are filters for us. DSP is all about filtering. Okay. DSP is all about filtering. But unfortunately, unfortunately, filtering is nothing but linear convolution. Okay. Linear convolution. But linear convolution cannot be done right we have studied the dtft could do linear convolution you multiply in the frequency domain take the inverse you get linear convolution z transforming can also do linear convolution multiply them in the z domain take the inverse both of them cannot be used because they are continuous in nature dft is discrete dft is discrete so this can be processed by a computer but when you multiply the dft in the frequency domain take the inverse 
what you get unfortunately is not linear convolution but it is circular convolution but but one thing is for sure i told you in the previous example if at all i choose a proper value of n then this circular convolution will also give me the result same as that of linear convolution okay hmm? okay now let us see the property what do this say let us see the property what do this say hmm? what is the property can somebody tell me what is the property what do we understand by the property see here there is a question now you have to find the circular convolution of the sequences x1 of n x2 of n in the uh, frequency domain so what i have to do is first i have to find the dft of this okay author has mentioned a four point circular convolution first i have to take dft of the first sequence then i have to take the dft of second sequence multiply take idf what you get is um, circular convolution see here author has given an example okay see here author has given an example uh, what are the first sequence uh, 2 1 2 1 right 2 1 2 1 and 1 2 1 2 hmm? 6 0 2 0 is the dtft of the first sequence 10 minus 2 plus 2j minus 2 minus 2 minus 2j is the second sequence i take the dft of the first sequence it is 6 0 2 0 second sequence 10 minus 2 plus 2j minus 2 minus 2 minus 2j then what i will do i will multiply them first term with first term remember it is not a vector multiplication 1 cross 1 multiply 1 cross 4 multiplied by 1 cross 4 not possible in the vector multiplication it's a scalar multiplication element by element multiplication second term gone zero fourth term also gone zero hmm? so you will be left with this term also zero this term also zero so 60 and minus 4 then you take idft and strangely the answer what you get is 14 16 14 16 same as that of the circular convolution so what is that uh, property by the way now shall we see what is the property it's the circular convolution property of dft a very very important property hmm? what does the property say you multiply the dft of two sequences take the inverse what you get is something similar to linear convolution but not linear convolution they call it the circular convolution okay so you can also get the answer of a linear convolution here only thing is you choose the value of n clearly that's that okay so uh, dft is also a useful tool for filtering okay dft is also a useful tool for filtering okay everybody comfortable hmm? comfortable did you understand this particular thing did you understand this particular thing somebody please reply okay you don't want to hmm. okay so now now additional dft properties i let me tell you now more of the other dft properties again i will not be solving uh, the telling you the proof of this it is there in the textbooks not a rocket science but i will give you very small tiny numericals based on each of this properties okay hmm? what is the first property you take a sequence hmm? you take a sequence now whose dft is known then you uh, reverse the sequence complex reversal okay reverse in sense uh, origin remains same you go anti clockwise that is usual you go clockwise that would be the reversal okay hmm? you uh, reverse the sequence its dft will also be reversed it seems okay that is first property not first one of the property then what are the other properties remember this property time shift of a sequence we know time shift of sequence shift in the time domain is multiplication by an exponential in the frequency domain that is fine but the difference is the shift is circular in dft the shift is circular otherwise the property is same as that in dtft similarly frequency shift we know shift in the time domain is multiplication by an exponential in the frequency domain a shift in the frequency domain is multiplication by an exponential in the time domain but here also something similar the shift is circular in nature okay shift is circular in nature what other properties do we have uh, yeah there is one complex conjugate property uh, what is this property if at all you happen to have a pair x of n and x of k then the dft of the conjugate sequence in the time domain 
will be time reversed okay conjugate sequence okay it's not same as a conjugate here simply will not translate into conjugate but it also cause a reversal remember okay similarly uh, what do i say here a conjugated reflection will result in a simple conjugate in the frequency domain or i should say a conjugate uh, of a dft in the frequency domain will result in inversion along with a reversal along with a conjugate sign in the time domain okay hmm? what is the other properties where do these properties find their application uh, i don't know unfortunately all the dots are joined when you get into uh, application side okay Ho hopefully hmm? you will be your curiosity will not be lost by them okay yeah there is one more thing just like a convolution there is something called as correlation also okay see here uh, what is this if at all i multiply x of k with uh, y of k right we just saw this x one of k x two of k if at all i multiply x of k with y of k what i get is circular convolution if at all i multiply x of k with y conjugate of k what i get is an expression similar to convolution okay something similar to circular convolution what is the difference here by the way if this uh, expression looks very similar to that of a circular convolution what is the difference circular convolution would have x1 of k x2 of n minus k huh circular convolution would have x of k x2 of n minus k remember k and n minus k hmm? okay n and n minus see here here this is somewhat different this is somewhat different let me go back to the expression that of uh, circular convolution hmm? wait a second okay okay see here see here n here is in the first location here it is n minus n okay whereas whereas for in case of a circular thing our correlation let me tell you in correlation it is somewhat different n is here in the beginning one okay correlation is also very important concept actually in communication it is correlation used mostly rather than convolution okay for some applications which may probably will be convinced in higher semesters but see here hmm? if at all we take a sequence multiply with the second dft what you get is circular convolution if at all take the first sequence multiply with the conjugate of the second sequence what you get is not convolution but something called as correlation okay something called as correlation okay hmm? what next what are other properties okay shift in the time domain is multiplication by uh, what is this uh, multiplication in the frequency domain is convolution in time domain Con multiplication in time domain is circular convolution in the frequency domain along with the n okay partial theorem next class okay let me stop here thanks for joining okay uh, do those assignments which i have given hmm? any doubts any queries message me here on the uh, personally message me personally okay because now it will Close. I will uh, send an invitation if at all any discussions are to be made. Otherwise, in the group. Okay. Thank you for joining the class. Yeah, everybody. Hi, everybody. Type hi. Quickly.